Pong in translation from subtitles to RCI, Omri Herskovici y Omer Gul. ¿Qué pensarías si te dijeran que cuando estás viendo una película en tu PC o sistema de streaming, alguien también puede estar viéndote a vos? Inocentes como parecen, existen diversos formatos de subtítulos que aceptan todo tipo de códigos, en donde sin una librería estándar, la implementación queda a libre albedrío de cada reproductor abriendo la puerta a una gran variedad de vectores de ataque. ¿Te gustan las películas de terror? Omri Herskovici es líder del equipo de investigación de vulnerabilidades en Checkpoint Software Technologies. Es un desarrollador y experto en seguridad de red con una amplia experiencia. En el pasado, Omri fue durante siete años oficial y líder en investigación y desarrollo en la unidad de inteligencia israelí. Omer ha sido investigador de seguridad en Checkpoint Software Technologies durante el último año. Tiene un historial de seguridad diverso y trabajó en una unidad de inteligencia de Lee como especialista IT. Hello, welcome to our talk Pwned in Translation from uh, Subtitles to Remote Code Execution. Quick introduction. We're Omel Omri, uh, security researchers at Checkpoint. This is actually our first time in uh, Argentina. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, we haven't learned a new uh, a Spanish new phrase. Uh, phrase. Uh, Por qué no tocas la tortuga? Not sure really what it means, but works. Okay, so let's get started. What we're going to present today is, is a new concept. It's a new attack vector. We call it subtitles drive-by attack. And it's important to remember that this is not about the vulnerabilities, even though we have plenty of those, but it's the notion that subtitles are now considered dangerous. So let's back up a little bit. This is how we used to watch movies at the local cinema. But as technology evolved, the internet became faster and we got lazier, the movies entered our living rooms. It could be a laptop, a smart TV, a Raspberry Pi, or an actual media center. The streaming options are endless. But designed with ease of use in mind, they take care of everything for us. They pull all the metadata, uh, the trailers, thumbnails, plot info, and the subtitles. Well, yeah, subtitles, it's a thing. These are the statistics uh, of daily downloads from one of the uh, main repositories, open subtitles, ranging from 7 million up to 10 million. It's, it's definitely a big thing. Now, obviously, subtitles are used for non-native English speakers like ourselves, uh, but not only. To convey the necessity of subtitles, we'll use the power of memes. They're used when you're watching uh, foreign films like uh, Anima or a pretentious French film. They're used for convenience in case there are any sort of sound limitations. And they're used in Guy Ritchie's movies. Sometimes they also uh, provide critical notes for the hearing impaired, as you can see here. Uh, but they, usually they have a lot more than just text display. Let's explore the subtitles landscape. We all know SRT, uh, Subrip Text. It supports a very basic set of HTML tags like bold, italic, underline, and such. There's also the subformat that stands for subviewer. It supports basic formatting like uh, colors and fonts. Sometimes sub actually stands for MP sub that supports none of the above. And at different occasions, sub can also stand for micro DVD subtitles. Uh, this sub supports formatting, color schemes, font configuration, subtitle location, and different character sets. Another common format is the substation alpha. It's a bit more sophisticated. It supports predefined style names, uh, fonts, uh, complex color palettes, outlines, shadows, alignment, margins, alpha level, and encodings. But it gets even more impressive 
as we move on to advanced substation alpha. Now, ASS contains all the functionality of SSA with some interesting additions. The ASS format supports scaling, angle shifting, binary image embedding, binary font embedding, drawing, we actually drew a small dinosaur <laughs> as part of the, the subtitles, and the specification even mentions system commands. It allows executing a specified program as a background task, and we truly hope no one ever implemented this bizarre feature. Okay, so back to our subtitles. There are actually shitload of subtitle formats. All in all, during our research, we encountered more than 25 subtitle formats. Some are binary, some are textual, none are well documented. So we asked ourselves, can the unregulated nature of this subtitle madness be exploited? So our first target was the most notorious streaming platform we know, uh, Popcorn Time. It's a multi-platform uh, Netflix for pirates, uh, integrated a deadly combination of a BitTorrent client, a video player, and endless scraping capabilities. Um, it, it's all under a very friendly graphical user interface. This beautiful WebKit uh, interface is packed with movie information and metadata. It presents the trailers, the plot summaries, the cast information, the cover photos, the IMDb ratings, and much more. But the way it does it, so elegantly beautiful, is using a platform that supports web technologies. Technologies as HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript built on top of a node engine. The two uh, main framework that allow such beauty are NWJS and Electron. Both are multi-platform, utilizing Chromium, and supports external plugins. Okay, so we know they look good, but are they vulnerable to anything? Well, these underlying technologies are very interesting from an attacker's perspective especially because what might be considered a weak vulnerability, at least in bug bounty programs such as XSS, can actually result in code execution because Node.js is essentially a JavaScript engine with server-side capabilities. And all you need to do in Node.js in order to uh, pop a calc is use this code which supports the, uh, imports the child process uh, library and uses its exact function with calc as the argument. We'll talk about this in a minute, but back to popcorn time. To make life even easier for the um, viewers, convenience, and the attackers, the, <laughs> um, the subtitles are being fetched automatically. The question remains, can this behavior be exploited? So behind the scenes, Popcorn Time uses open subtitles uh, as their sole subtitle provider with over 4 million uh, entries and a very convenient API. It is an extremely popular repository. This API does not only allow for uh, easy search and download of subtitles, but it also has a recommendation algorithm. We'll dive deeper into that process a bit later turns out to be a, a key step in our strive for world domination. So, gaining some knowledge about Popcorn Time infrastructure, let's see how subtitles make their way from download to screen. Our journey begins as soon as the user starts playing a movie. Popcorn Time downloads the subtitle and converts whatever format it gets to an SRT timecode. After the conversion, it is passed to the update display function. This function will create an HTML span containing the subtitle text. Now, since the SRT format supports HTML tags, and this is a WebKit, 
they didn't need to make any implementation of HTML supports for the subtitles. It's obviously built with HTML to its core. But perhaps we can write other things than HTML, like JavaScript, and sanitized JavaScript on top of a Node.js WebKit application? Let's try this simple example. This is how a standard SRT file looks like. We already know it supports HTML tags. But what if we try to load an image that doesn't exist and provide it with the on error attribute? XSS 101, we know that the on error attribute can run JavaScript. So brace yourself. OK, we got our first vulnerability. Uh, we managed to make subtitles pop a message box. But that's not good enough. Let's try something a bit more advanced. What if, instead of the alert, we write a code to clean things up, remove the revealing icon of the broken image, and append our malicious payload to the page? which would dynamically create a, a script loaded from a remote host. Our host. Well, needless to say, um, just as we showed earlier, <laughs> EvilJS uh, will utilize... <laughs> Should oh, we no. get Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, <laughs> 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 Over here. Mm -hmm. First speakers? Yes. I hope you like vodka. No. No? But I okay. Love vodka. <laughs> <laughs> we like alcohol. That's all that matters. Where's yours? <laughs> You're taking the bottle? Yeah. Nice. Thank you for having us. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit. Anyway, we said we can load the uh, JavaScript from a remote host, which we control. And that JavaScript can be actually the JavaScript code we showed earlier, the one that pops a calculator. Um, it utilizes the Node.js capabilities to the framework in order to run a process. Let's see how it looks. OK. At this point, the user opens Popcorn Time, chooses his favorite movie. My favorite movie. <laughs> Loads the subtitles. Very stealth, as you can see. Here we get the attacker's perspective. And now the attacker has full control over the victim's computer. Thank you. OK, that's cool. We know how to create malicious subtitles for Popcorn Time. That's great, but how would a user get our subtitles? So let's talk a little about the subtitle supply chain. With an average of 8 million daily downloads, Open Subtitle is the world's largest online community uh, for subtitles. Their extensive API is widely integrated into many other video players. Now, among the basic functions you would, have ex you would expect to find in such API as download and upload of subtitles, um, it also has a smart search capability. The smart search is essentially a chained function requesting all relevant subtitles for a given movie sort and rank them and provide you with the most suitable subtitle for you. 
Let's take a look. Okay, so looking at the request of the smart search, we can see the only argument passed is IMDB ID. This is a request being sent, sent by the API used in popcorn time. Um, it, sent, it, it is sent along with the uh, required language, in this case, all languages. Well, the response contains all matching subtitles to that IMDB ID. So, obviously, Popcorn Time automatically loads the subtitles with the highest rank. But what determines the rank? So, skimming through the documentation, we bumped into this ranking scheme. We can see that the score is based on five criteria. Movie hash, tag, IMDB ID, FPS, and something called others. Also, extra points are, be, are being credited for being an admin or a trusted partner. But since the only argument sent by Popcorn Time is the IMDB ID, if we would have wanted our malicious subtitles to be chosen by the API, the maximum points we could have get is five, as being anonymous uploaders. A bit discouraged by the documentation and scores seen in uh, all other popular movies, which were higher than five, we turned to the source code of Open Subtitles API, where we learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> if you truly want to break something, reading the documentation is not the way to go. So um, the source code revealed an undocumented behavior. The match tags function is called either way. But what is match tags? The match tags function will break the file name of the movie and the subtitles to tags. A tag is basically a, an isolated word or a number found in the file name. Uh, they are us usually separated by dots and dashes. After that, a short loop checks how many shared tags does the movie has in common with the subtitle. And then a weird formula is taking place. The amount of shared tags is then divided by the number of movie tags multiplied by a max score of seven, which is the max score that can be given in case of full compatibility. Let's see a demonstration of how, of how this function behaves. Okay, so let's assume this is the movie file name streamed by Popcorn Time, which is easily checked by using a sniffer. And this is the name of a candidate subtitle file name. The code first splits the movie file name into tags. Then it splits the subtitle file name. The match tags function then checks how many shared tags they have, three in this case. The API then goes to its formula, which is shared tags, three, as we just saw, divided by the tags in the file name, eight, we see that on the left, multiplied by a max score, which is a constant number of seven. This gives us the final score of two. Okay, well, this behavior makes it trivial to achieve full compatibility. All we need to do is name our malicious subtitles identically to the movie file name. In this case, we get full compatibility plus the IMDB ID five points we already had, and we get 12 points. But wait, there's more. These are the recommended subtitle score for some of the most popular content available online. Uh, Deadpool, Frozen, Inception, Snowden, and Westworld Season 1, Episode 1. This graph shows the score of uh, the seven most popular languages in the world displaying their average and highest score. Scanning automatically through a bunch of popular subtitles, we noticed that the highest score of, uh, that a subtitle got was 14, while the average is around 10. At this point, we show that we can consistently achieve a solid score of 12, higher than the average, but still we weren't satisfied. Well, as you recall, extra points are being credited for being a ranked user. 
crawling open subtitles uh, website, we found this table. Apparently, all it takes to become a gold member and earn extra three points is 101 uploads. So we signed up to open subtitles, and four minutes later and 40 lines of Python, we were golden. So we wrote a small script that gets the score of all subtitles available for a given movie. As you can see here, our subtitle has the highest score of 15. What this basically means that given any movie, we can force your player to load our crafted malicious subtitles and exploit your machine. Thank you. Let's see what else we can do with it. Omer. Okay, so on to our next victim. Uh, Cody, which is formerly known as XBMC, is uh, an award-winning open-source cross-platform media player. Uh, it is available in all major platforms, uh, over 72 languages, and used by over 40 million people. It is probably the most common uh, media center software around. It is also a very popular combination with uh, Raspberry Pis and smart TVs, making it very interesting from a attacker's perspective. Uh, this is the screen that is displayed when uh, a user wants to download the subtitles using Kodi. This is the request that is being sent. Uh, we're already, we recognize it as we're already familiar with open subtitles API structure. And this is the code that is actually fetching the subtitle. So let's go over it. Uh, first, the search subtitle function is called, and the response will be saved into a variable called search data. Then uh, a for loop iterates over these results, extracting the information from them and formats them into a string called URL. Then each of the created URLs are sent to add directory item function, which in turn results in this screen. And now the user can select his desired subtitles and watch the movie. So let's focus on that URL string for a moment. Since open subtitle is obviously open, the attacker has full control over the file name parameter that is received under the value of sub file name. And here we see how each of these uh, four keys in item data are formatted into that URL string. Now, given the fact that the attacker completely controls the file name, what can be done with it? So, usually the file name will be something like this, uh, subtitle file name dot SRT. But what if afterwards we append the ampersand sign? and then something like this. So this would effectively override the original uh, link and ID parameter, which we originally didn't have any control over, simply, simply because this is a string and it is being parsed by a very basic split function. But how does this help us? Uh, well, once the user chooses the subtitle, the download function would be called. And the arguments to that download functions are derived from the URL. Uh, and these are the arguments we can now control. We have the ID and the, and the link. So how does this function behave? Let's see. First, it uses the uh, Open Subtitles API to download the subtitles uh, based on the ID given to it. But the interesting part is what happens if it fails. Uh, if the ID does not exist, then the not results branch uh, would be taken, uh, which download a zip file, but from the link given to it. So by changing the ID to something that doesn't really exist, such as uh, minus one, two, three, and overwriting the link to point to a, a zip file stored on our servers, uh, we can force Kodi to download a remote zip file 
Uh, and after download, that zip file will be sent uh, to the function called xbmc extract. Now, instead of using any started library available for zip extraction, Cody decided to implement their own, which, as we all know, is usually a great idea, right? <laughs> uh, so, downloading an arbitrary zip file from the internet is definitely careless, but chaining this behavior with another vulnerability that we found in Cody built in extraction made it lethal. Uh, let's see. Uh, what the Cody built in extract arch archive function does is building a file path based on the folder names uh, inside the zip. Uh, but what Cody neglected to handle uh, are folder names that contain two dots. So that's right, we have directory traversal here. Uh, so all we have to do is create a zip file that contains dots as folder names, and then we can make the extraction create a Python script uh, and overwrite anything, we choose to overwrite the add-on script itself because it will be immediately called again, thus executing our code. So this was assigned with this CVE and the second vulnerability for today. Let's see that in action. So the user opens Cody, uh, look for his favorite film. Not Frozen this time, <laughs> sadly. Also a great film, though. Okay, so this is the subtitle menu we uh, mentioned earlier. Obviously, all, I think, top three results will be ours since we can manipulate the entire uh, <laughs> ranking scheme, right? So you can choose whatever subtitle you'd like. User clicks any of the subtitles. Again, we zoom out to the attacker perspective. And a few moments later, we get a reverse shell and PNC client. Great. Okay, so <laughs> moving on to our <laughs> next target. Uh, well, Popcorn Time definitely marked the rise of streaming apps, but uh, being temporarily shut down by the MPAA, uh, it left users looking for alternatives, and Stream.io offer just that. Uh, like Popcorn Time, it is designed with ease of use in mind, and actually has quite similar user interface. Uh, so we thought it would be fun to give it a shot, and interestingly enough, uh, Stream.io shares a few characteristics with Popcorn Time under the hood. Most importantly for us, it is also a WebKit-based application and you guessed it right, it also uses open <laughs> subtitles as its uh, subtitle provider. Uh, so we just tried the same trick that we used on Popcorn Time. You can actually see the broken image icon at the bottom, uh, but no message box was popped, so that didn't work. And apparently our JavaScript has been sanitized and it was uh, time to dig a little deeper. So. Stream.io code is archived as an Acer file, which is a simple tar-like format uh, that concatenates all files together just without the compression. Uh, so we used a Node.js library to extract it, and we got all the necessary code uh, we needed in order to inspect uh, the functionality. Uh, so extracting the source code and prettifying it, we realized that any text added to screen is passed through the Angular uh, sanitize. Um, this sanitized service will parse an HTML and only allow for uh, safe and whitelisted markup and attributes to survive, uh, thus sterilizing the string so it contains no scripting expressions or any dangerous attributes. And having to use uh, only static HTML tags uh, with no scripting capabilities really limited our options, and this called for a creative solution. So if you've ever used Stream.io, 
uh, actually both of us use it back home, but don't tell anyone. Uh, you must be familiar with their uh, support us pop-up banner. Uh, now, we know that we can use HTML tags, right? Uh, so what if we present the support us image to that user uh, using the image tag, but we surround it with an href tag? Uh, this way, there's actually no JavaScript to be sanitized. And once the user would click the image in order to close it, like he always does, he will be re redirected once again uh, to our uh, page and malicious JavaScript. Uh, let's take a look at our third vulnerability. So you get the support us banner, the user just click it to close it, and we get a calc. <laughs> Great. Okay, now <laughs> realizing the disastrous potential of subtitle as an attack vector, uh, we moved on. And I'm pretty sure that there is no need to introduce our next victim. Uh, because with over 180 million users, uh, VLC is one of the most common media uh, players out there. Uh, this open source, portable, cross-platform uh, media framework is available for almost any platform imaginable. Um, at this point, uh, Yanai Livne, you can see him right there, uh, also a member of our team, join us, and much of the work shown here is due to his amazing contribution. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, VLC. Uh, VLC is in fact a complete multimedia framework, just like uh, DirectShow or GStreamer, if you're familiar with that, uh, where you can load and plug in many modules dynamically depending on the necessity. And the core framework is just used to do uh, the wiring of the media processing. So, from inputs like files and network streams to outputs, uh, whether they're audio or video on screen or on a network, uh, it uses modules to do most of the work at every stage. It has various uh, demoxers, decoders, and filters. And being described by its own authors as a very popular but quite large and complex piece of software, we were confident that we can find subtitles related vulnerabilities. So let's see them. Uh, textual subtitles are parsed by VLC in a demoxer called subtitles.c. Uh, these are all its supported formats and the respective parsing function. Yes, that's quite a lot, actually. And uh, the Muxer's only job is to parse the different uh, timing convention of each format and send every subtitle to its decoder. Now, other than SSA and ASS, that we discussed earlier, that are decoded by a dedicated library like they should, all other formats are decoded by VLC's own decoder, uh, subsdex. Uh, but inevitably, uh, when implementing their own decoder, uh, things will go wrong. So, Subsdex takes every subtitle, uh, let's take SRT, uh, in, for example, and parses its text field. It then creates two versions of it. Uh, the first is a plain text version, uh, with all tags and attributes and styling stripped off. Uh, this will be used in case later rendering will fail. The second, more feature-rich uh, version is referred to as the HTML subtitle. HTML subtitles will contain all the fancy styling attributes, such as fonts, alignment, whatever. And after being decoded, subtitles are sent to the final stage of rendering. So, going over the VLC subtitle-related code, we immediately noticed a lot of parsing is being done using uh, raw pointers instead of uh, built-in string functions. And this is generally a bad idea. Uh, let's see an example of it. Again, this is how a basic SRT uh, subtitle looks like. Uh, this code uses the PSZ subtitle uh, variable to parse the subtitle one byte at a time. 
In this case, the code just identify an HTML font tag. It then moved on to consume it attributes, the face attributes in this case. The decoder will actually continue reading from the buffer until uh, a closing bracket is met. What this means is that in case that the closing bracket is missing, the parcel would just keep on reading, uh, resulting in an out-of-bound read vulnerability uh, that was assigned with this CVE. And while auditing the code manually, we also started fuzzing VLC for subtitle-related vulnerabilities. And our weapon of choice was the brilliant AFL. Uh, this security-oriented fuzzer uh, employs compile-time instrumentation and uh, genetic algorithms to discover new internal states and trigger edge cases in the targeted binary. And actually, getting the fuzz command right was a bit tricky. Uh, we created a corpus and we created a dictionary, uh, but our main obstacle was the fact that the fuzzing server had no GUI. And we overcame this challenge by using the transcode functionality. Uh, what this option does is making VLC convert a movie from one codec to another, attaching the subtitles uh, while displaying nothing. So this was perfect for us. So let's move on to the corpus. Uh, a corpus is a set of initial case test cases uh, comprising of valid files that represent the protocol or the functionality that is being fuzzed. And we plan to start with SRT uh, and ASS simply as these were the formats that we researched first. And for our corpus, uh, we cherry-picked various files that incorporated some of the more exotic features that uh, we discussed earlier. And this is the basic time convention of SRT format. And like I said, we intended on adding more formats to the corpus as we go along. But the amazing thing is that we didn't need to. AFL just blindly built valid subtitle files of different formats with zero knowledge. Uh, in this case, he actually created the JSS format all by itself. And this is actually a demonstration of one of AFL's greatest strengths which is assembly level uh, instrumentation. Because the, the odds of a traditional fuzzer to just randomly flip bits and bytes uh, to take the timing convention of SRT and turn them to uh, JSS are extremely low. However, through uh, assembly level instrumentation, AFL notices how a minor mutation triggers slightly different code path. And it then uses those as a seed for further fuzzing rounds. So it did a really great job. And it didn't take it too long uh, to lock down on a vulnerable function called parse JSS. And JSS actually stands for JCO subscript files. So JCO sub uh, is actually a very flexible format, allowing for some pretty interesting functionalities. It relies heavily on something called directives. Uh, a directive is a series of uh, character codes strung together and they determine the subtitle position, font, color, and so forth. And they come in two forms. So first, uh, you have the global directive that will affect all the subtitles below it in the text file. Uh, or you have the inline directive affecting only the current line. And these are some of uh, the more common directives uh, that are used in JSS. So we have T that uh, stands for timer. Uh, that is used to set the time resolution, uh, which is 100 units a second uh, in this case. We have S that stands for shift that will cause all events to occur uh, 20 time units sooner than usual. Uh, we have F, and this line will actually send, uh, set font number 3. You can predefine up to 10 fonts. It will uh, define this font as a JCO sub. 18, which is a monocolor font available in JSS. Uh, and for an inline directive, here's an example. Uh, CP2 will display uh, the following text using color palette number 2, which can be also be uh, user predefined. Uh, yeah, so it's very weird, and VLC doesn't do a great job in parsing those. 
looking at the basic parse JSS function, we can see that VLC iterates over the, the lines with a while loop. Again, one byte at a time. And it parses time codes and a handful of supported directives, uh, and the text itself, obviously. And the crash found by FL was due to an out-of-bound read uh, while, tri while trying to skip the unsupported uh, directives. So here and throughout, PSC text is a pointer to a null terminated uh, string allocated on the heap. And this code assumed that the directive is always followed by a space. Therefore, it would look for that space uh, to indicate the end of a directive. Uh, in case a directive is written without any following spaces, uh, this while loop will actually skip the null byte terminator and overrunning the buffer. Uh, this uh, makes it for number five for today. So, and this got our attention for the parse JSS function, and we soon found manually another uh, two out of bound read issues in the parsing of the directives that were supported. Uh, moving on with the JSS format, uh, we stumbled upon the color and the font directives. As you can see, uh, the codes include a double increment to skip from the directive right to the argument itself. But in case, again, the directive is, uh, doesn't contain any arguments to follow it, meaning it ended with null termination, the double increment just skip the null terminator. Uh, but let's see how this code is combined within the bigger picture. So the, this entire uh, chunk of code is within a while loop. And here is our double increment right there. Uh, skipping the null byte, we actually remain in this while loop, uh, copying from PSZ text to PSZ text 2. However, PSZ text 2 is only the length of PSZ text plus 1. So while we are reading out of buffer at one point, we are actually writing out of buffer at another point. And this sixth vulnerability, a heap-based overflow, uh, actually allowed us to ultimately uh, execute arbitrary code, uh, which we'll see in a demo in a second. And at another case, my personal favorite, you can see that when uh, the parsing loop reaches a null terminator in a specific case, for some reason, it, it intentionally decides to skip it, uh, making this <laughs> number seven and the wildest vulnerability of all. Uh, let's talk about exploitability for a second. These bugs are definitely not trivial to exploit. However, it is interesting to note that the main binary of VLC is not ASLR uh, or PI, as it's called in Linux. Now, uh, by design, the main binary is just wiring libvlc core and the plugins uh, together, but it offers some quite useful gadgets. Uh, for example, this one that will find the symbol of whatever it is in uh, whatever string is in RSI and call it with RBX as an argument, which again is quite useful, right? Uh, so for a quick POC, we had Yanai to develop an exploit for this vulnerability. For the moment, uh, ignoring ASLR. Okay, we see the user plays a movie choosing his subtitle. and we get a calc. Thank okay, thank you. Uh, let's sum up this research. So we discussed the complete madness that is the subtitle landscape. We saw we had over 25 subtitle formats, none of them well documented, without any dedicated libraries, and zero standardization between players. We were able to gain full remote code execution on four major platforms. Now, please note that these were the only platforms that we researched. So that means that other platforms out there are probably vulnerable to subtitle drive-by attacks. Uh, we were also able to manipulate the subtitle repository ranking scheme, thus taking control actually completely over the entire subtitle supply chain. Uh, so what this essentially means is that we just presented a new malware delivery system, completely transparent to the user, that requires no user interaction, 
which in our case included over 220 million potential victims. Now, the, notions, the notion of attackers being able to upload malicious subtitles to major repository and forcing different players to download them uh, should now be taken into account as a new valid attack vector and prepare the security vendors and industry to mitigate it. Okay, and now the moment you've all been waiting for. Omri <laughs> and myself, we made a little bonus for you, our audience. We curated our favorite calc popping scenes into a beautiful compilation. <laughs> now, actually, the first draft of this talk, this bonus was titled Two Girls, One Calc. <laughs> yes, this almost got us both fired. <laughs> So, instead of being fired, we just decided to tone it down a little bit. Uh, so, <laughs> here it is. Enjoy. People sometimes make mistakes. Yes, they do. How can I talk? It's not a real voice. Uh, this box just interprets signals from the computer and turns them into sound. Shall we play a game? Oh. <laughs> I think I missed them. Yeah, weird, isn't it? Yeah. What is it? It up to us. Is that what I think it is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is. God damn it, what is it? <laughs> Wanna play this? Okay. Have a play with you. Come on. Okay. Do you want to play with us? Okay. No. Say hello to my little friend. Do you want to play with us? Okay. Ah. Okay. Do you want more? And that's just a sample of the exciting exploits ahead <laughs> in our first feature motion picture. Holy memoranda, folks. Make a note not to miss it. Good thinking, Robin. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have time for some questions. Right. Who says? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Spich. Spich. <laughs>